Other manufacturers make their cases shine with eye-catchy RGB lighting, but Jansbo went one step further, equipping their case with an integrated screen. That one is attached directly to the case, but it can also be placed down on one's desk and be used as a secondary monitor. So let me introduce you the Jansbo D41 screen in white. The same case is of course also available in black. In addition, there's not only the D41 version with and without mesh, but also one with and without a screen. The most popular combination, needless to say, is mesh and screen. What I'm looking at today is the highly sought after version with the monitor. The price is at around 120 to 150 US dollars, but it's easily sold out since there's high demand for it. No wonder. So let's take a look at what this D41 is offering and whether or not it's actually any good. The scope of included stuff is very generous here. Not only are we getting a user guide for the case, but also additional accessories for the version with the screen. This also includes a replacement front bezel, if you will, in case you prefer having the screen detached from the actual case. Plus, there are of course the necessary HDMI and USB cables. There also are instructions. The remaining usual accessories such as screws and whatnot for the actual case are inside the case. First of all, hats off to Jansbo for this incredibly gorgeous, sleek and elegant design. Right away, I fell in love with the aesthetics here, even without considering the screen. I have absolutely no complaints as far as build quality is concerned, everything appears to be well built. Overall, one can speak of a more compact case, into which one can easily fit regular sized ATX motherboards. However, you shouldn't go with two white boards. The specs otherwise look great on paper. But I do have to point out that the D41 comes with absolutely no fans pre-installed right out of the box. So you'll have to buy them yourselves and factor in those additional costs into your building budget. The tempered glass panel comes off without having to rely on any tools and simply snaps back into place. We see the exact same thing on the other solid side panel. That's a really neat and clean solution. The same method has been applied to the monitor. You simply pull it out, away from the case and snap it back on for instance. Or you just replace it with the included solid front bezel. Looks nice too. Therefore the screen doesn't necessarily have to stick to the case only, but can be placed on the desk and act as a secondary monitor, even with the option of adjusting the angle in a very primitive way. You simply screw those long standoffs in. I'll put it this way, it's a bit unconventional, but quite effective. The monitor on the screen's end is connected via mini HDMI and USB-C. HDMI serving as the video signal, USB for power. The other ends of the respective cables are regular full-sized HDMI and USB Type-A. There are three buttons on the monitor to turn it on and off, as well as to adjust the brightness. At the front, the D41 doesn't offer the best airflow options when dealing with the standard version without any mesh. There are only a few vents on one side. So I guess this version is more so targeted at the silence freaks out there. But do not worry, you can draw in fresh air elsewhere in this case. There's space for up to three 120 or two 140mm fans on the case bottom. The same amount of fans can also be mounted to the top, which is even easier. However, radiators too surprisingly can't fit in here. So at the top you could mount up to a 360 or 280mm one. On the bottom, we're talking of 360mm at max. The only exception being the front. There's not a lot going on there, simply because Jansfo had to restructure the case layout a little bit. If you remove everything in the front, not a single dust filter by the way, you'll have to unscrew the inner side panel in order to be able to start installing hardware in here properly. As you can see, the power supply goes to the front of the case and basically is screwed into its own bracket. You can install the units with up to a length of 220 millimeters. It is worth mentioning that the PSU can be installed at different height levels, so we're given quite a bit of options here. At the top there's a cover held in place by two thumbscrews we can remove. 
Here too, we don't see any dust filter and it's not really necessary to have one up here anyway. The only long removable dust filter is located at the case's bottom and is held in place magnetically. There are plenty of cutout holes for cable routing in the D41. However, there are no rubber grommets at all. Our hard drive cage sits right below the power supply mounting bracket. The HDD cage needs to be unscrewed in order to install any drives. Only then we are given the option to install up to two 3.5 inch HDDs or even a single 2.5 inch drive to the top of the cage. Alternatively, you could skip the hard drive cage altogether and if necessary, screw a single HDD directly to the bottom of the case. On the other side, we are offered the usual two trays for 2.5 inch SSDs. But let's talk some more about the monitor. It's an 8 inch screen equipped with an IPS panel, so it offers very good viewing angles. The resolution of 1280 by 800 pixels, of course, is rather low, but the image still looks sharp enough given the small screen size. The refresh rate is 60 Hz. The response times are, of course, somewhat lackluster, but actually not as bad as one would initially assume. The brightness is totally fine. The cables can neatly be routed to the outside of the case through the bottom expansion slot cover. Needless to say, the PSU power cord needed to be extended as well. Johnsbo thought of it all and seemingly offers a solution for everything here. So what was building hardware into the case like? What were my experiences with the D41? I can reassure you, I did not run into the slightest issues even though the D41 appears to be fairly tight. The whole concept was obviously incredibly well thought out. Johnspo deserves a lot of praise for that indeed. Not only could you fit a much longer radiator in here, but also a thicker and overall larger beast of a graphics card with a length of up to 330 to 400 millimeters. Due to the mounting holes moved slightly sideways at the top, radiators don't interfere with any motherboard heatsinks. What I'm not really a big fan of is when power supplies are mounted somewhere else in cases where there is only limited intake of fresh air. This also applies to today's D41. However, in all fairness, the PSU can either be oriented in a way it is able to draw in air from inside or outside of the case. If I actually owned the mesh version of the D41, there wouldn't have been any issue regarding power supply airflow at all. That is when having the PSU's fan face the front. Nonetheless, I can even confirm with my standard version, those bottom fans allow for a good amount of air to enter the case. There's a fairly quick exchange of air, so the power supply at least doesn't suffocate. I also find the fact there is a USB-C port at the front I.O. worthy of praise. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, they've completely skipped on the reset button. Admittedly, I found doing the cable management trickier in here than in most other cases. I was never good at it and it goes to show even more in here. Still, thanks to the high number of points onto which I could tie those cables down, I was able to achieve a somewhat acceptable cable management job for my standards. The bottom line here is that today's Johnspo D41 with or without a screen makes my enthusiast heart beat a little faster. Not only do I like the looks of this case, but so am I impressed of its inner values. I'd even go as far and say this counts to one of the very rare highlights as far as PC cases are concerned for me. At a price of about $120 and maybe even a little more, it's overall offering a great package. Although you should keep in mind, there's not a single fan included out of the box. Anyway, this case receives a big thumbs up from me and a strong recommendation, preferably the version with the mesh front panel. Thank you so much for watching guys and until the next one.